Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the Amala 736 from Auto Trail. So as I start the walk round of the vehicle, on the driver's side, the first point you get to is your mains connectivity point. So if you slide the flap up, take your hooker blade, lift the collar and slide on. Always hook the vehicle up first, then your power source and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead should it be wet or should your lead ever become damaged. You don't want to get an electric shock. Then underneath you've got your waste water outlet. So on the side here, there's a lever and you'd simply open it. And this is anything you've put down a plug hole. So dishes, kitchen, sink, shower and hand basin water. So in the winter it's very important that you drain this off and leave no water in the vehicle because it could potentially freeze. But normally on the way out of the site you'd go to your motorhome service bay and drain this off. Coming further back, so on this set of your keys you've got a round key which is all the external lockers. So you can lock and unlock these locks. And then what you need to do is push them in. Lift your cassette out, so make sure the blade's closed on the bottom bowl of the toilet, which I'll show you more when I'm inside about that. Slide it out. Remove the cap so it's exposed like so. Go to your waste disposal site so you can either carry it or you've got wheels so you can drag it. Go to your waste disposal site, which is normally behind or beside your toilet and shower room block. Press the button, tip out. Once you've tipped it out, you put some water in via the spout, give it a rinse and then what you can do is tip it out again and then if you're using the liquid in the chemical, the chemical liquid, you'd use the, the cap as a measuring stick and a cap full into here and then the cap would screw on the end or if you're using the tablet form, you put a pint of water in and drop a sachet into the toilet which will break up into the chemical. Push the back in the vehicle and when it clicks in like so, it's in place. Down here you've got your fresh water outlet. So this is if you're taking on any contaminated water, you're not using the vehicle for a while and you want to let the water out or you simply want to drain the vehicle off for the winter. All you need to do is turn and allows the water to drain out the vehicle as you wouldn't want the water to freeze. So that's your fresh water drain. And above, you've got your Truma vent for your boiler. It does its own thing. And here you've got your under storage and the back lounge, obviously carpets. This is your boiler. It holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter, it's very important that you eliminate all water in the vehicle. So you've opened the fresh and the waste from outside. You'll then want to open the boiler. So to do so, simply Click this up and you'll see underneath that it's draining 10 litres of water directly out underneath the chassis. Leave it stood up during the time you've got the vehicle in storage so no water freezes in here because if it does, does freeze in there it voids any warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off as frost damage isn't covered. When you are ready to reuse it you shut all the taps outside shut the boiler shut all the taps inside because we always say if you leave all the mixer taps open and remove the shower head from the hose and allow that to lie in the shower tray just means any water is just going to dribble out the vehicle shut all the taps within the vehicle and outside fill the vehicle with fresh water via a hose pipe which i'll show you in a minute how to do so go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatic cold water go to the hot side it will cough splutter make all sorts of noises because what it's doing is it's drawing the fresh water in from the tank into here and pushing the 10 litres of air that's accumulated in there out until you get a pressurized floor on one tap do them all then it is ready for the season from around the back of the vehicle so you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera this customer has fitted a two bike rack, so these don't come as standard. These are something we fit here at the dealership. So you'd simply pull down. You can move these 
up and down the reel, depending on how long your bikes are. Put your wheels on there, and then these through the spokes to tie the wheels down. And then these on the crossbar, so these just go on the frame of the bike, you've got your first bike and your second bike. Then what I would advise is you put some sort of security lock around your bikes, just in case you do pull over anywhere to stop for a break and leave the vehicle unattended. Your bikes aren't going to be stolen off the back of the motorhome. Coming round you've got another locker, which is just storage again. And then here is your fresh water filler. So this little key here locks this flap and all you need to do is go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some ends because it's just a brass tap on most sides so you'll need to screw on end and some hose lock. Put the hose into there, wait until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board. You can't see on the main control, control panel how much water is on board at any one time. LPG liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. In here you can fit two bottles, so I'll show you how to put a bottle on. So at the moment there's no bottle on, but what you can do is get a bottle, you know, make sure that it's tied in when it's on the vehicle and it's staying on the vehicle. And you can fit two six kilogram propane gas bottles on there. You always want to make sure that this little valve here is pushed in. So normally they're staying, but this is just a crash sensor and that would just stay in there. Putting the bottle on, so you get your bottle. Take the stopper out the, the end of the bottle first. Should it be a new bottle like this one is. Get your pigtail. To connect your pigtail to your bottle, it's a hand tighten and it's a left hand thread with it being gas or opposite threads with it being gas and then you will need a gas spanner to nip to finally nip the bottle up so if you just turn so you can get it as tight as you can with your hands then you need an adjustable wrench or a gas spanner like I've said just to nip it up and you turn on and off the top of the bottle, turn it off when you're traveling, make sure it's strapped in and then when you've turned it on if you just press this black button here the crash valve on the pigtail allows hold it for three seconds that allows the gas through into the vehicle and then finally just check this one is pushed in should it not be pushed in and popped out it just it's just a crash sensor it's just for safety coming further down the vehicle you've got your external gas point so on the cable tie you've got a spigot there so you just need to cut that off go and buy yourself some rubber gas hose put that on one end with a jubilee clip pushes into there connect your other end to your kadak or your external awning heater or whatever you're going to use this runs off the main bottle on board and then you can turn the lpg gas tab on and off to allow gas to this point got your two fridge vents Your door is on the central locking, so you just press the bottom button on the key. So you've got top for the cab, middle locks all, bottom opens the habitation door, or you can manually open it with the key as well. And then you do have your step switch here. So this will automatically lose track as soon as the engine started. As soon as the engine stopped, you can then put the step in and out. Coming to the passenger door, you've got your diesel filler which opens with the main ignition key. And then below, because it's a new styled clean diesel engine, it's got the add blue system. So it's a 19 litre tank. It'll come on between the fuel and the temperature gauge on the dashboard, which just looks like an exhaust light. As soon as it comes on, if you do just top it up, you can get it on, buy it on the pump, or you can buy it in the barrels and put it in. But if you were to fail to not put it in and allow it to go too low, the vehicle will go into limp mode. If you allow it to go completely dry of add blue, the vehicle just won't start. On the 
passenger door here, you've got the tyre pressure, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 psi all round. Got a tool kit underneath the passenger seat, so that's got a jack and a brace and a torn eye in, and then your engine battery lives underneath this compartment in the floor, and your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So we'll just have a quick look underneath the bonnet. stay in place. So this side, the left hand side, you've got all your fluids. So you've got screen wash. This lifts off and fills power steering and radiator fluid. Then you've got your brake fluid, your engine oil and your dipstick for checking your levels. Paint code, so 6111 for the Grigio Aluminium. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start. And then your contact just down here behind the Passenger side headlight is your positive contact for giving or receiving a jump start. Weight 3650. So you do need to see one on your license to drive this. And then train weight. So the vehicle and whatever you're towing can't exceed 4.9 ton. So to operate the control panel, what you need to do is go to master switch at the top. So you can turn this on. Obviously if you're hooked up, you'll get 240 volts. If you're not hooked up, you'll just get 12 volt off the main leisure battery. Below, you've got your master switch for your lights, which are all then individually switched around the vehicle. And then below the lights, you've got the pump. So should you want to use the taps, toilet or shower, you must turn the pump on which pressurizes the water otherwise you won't get any water through the taps and then on the other side at the top you've got the owner light which is the light outside and then you can flick through here so if you start off from the main menu so sergeant ec 363 12 volt control panel Click again, it'll tell you that your leisure battery is 13.5 volts and it's charging, so that gives you a clue that you're hooked up. Taking the hook about will give you a true reading on your leisure battery. Press again, it'll tell you your vehicle battery is 13.9 volts and charging. Again, taking that out will give a true reading of the battery. Your water tank levels is fresh, 75%, zero waste, and then you Select battery, you want always to be the leisure. Never run the motorhome off the vehicle battery as there is a chance you can flatten it. So always make sure it's on the leisure. So it says battery equals leisure. And then you've got the internal temperature and humidity. And then you can adjust the time displayed on the main control panel. So just going through the front controls again, you've got your master switch on and off. You've got your master switch for your lights your pump so you must have that on to use any water you've got your awning light which is your exterior light and then that scrolls through the little screen there and tells you your water levels your battery levels and so on so to operate your digital truma control panel so to turn on little black wheel here so the dial you press and hold you can get to the standby screen if you just press again you'll enter so what you've got to do is you've got the motorhome in the top left hand corner with the thermometer in. This is how hot you want your vehicle. So you can have it off if you don't want the heating on in the summer or you can have it all the way to 30 degrees. And then what you do is you just press enter and that's preset that heating there to 26 degrees. 
and then next week you've got the water so the water with the thermometer in so if there's no water in the boiler don't have the water on because it's exactly like fry, um, boiling a kettle without any water in you'll fry the element so you can have it on eco which is heating the water at 40 degrees you can have it on hot which is heating the water at 60 degrees or you can have it on boost which will turn off the heating and prioritize the water first so for this we'll just say hot so this is heating the water at 60 degrees and again you just press the wheel and that's preset that to hot and then moving further along you've got what source you're off so there's a gas bottle and electricity signs so this is the source so you can have gas on its own which is obviously if you're wild camping and you have no electric cookup you'd have no choice but to heat the water or the vehicle off gas you've got a mix one which is one kilowatt of electric and gas you've got mix two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas so this is doubling the source so this is both sources together which should rapidly reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle or the water which you'd normally use in the winter and then you've got electric on one kilowatt so just depending on what amperage you get through your cougar bleed you can have one kilowatt or you can have two so it depends on what the site gives you normally in the UK you can use electric on two or more sites but you may have to use on the smaller sales sites in this country and abroad electric on one kilowatt so for this we'll just say electric on two kilowatts and then moving on in the top right hand corner you've got the fan so you can have it on eco which saves a bit of the 12 volt assisted fan or you can have it on high which you'll hear the fan a bit louder so on an evening what I'd recommend is you have it on eco it's just not as loud and then during the day you can have it on high should you need to blow the heat around the vehicle more in the winter months down in the bottom left you've got a timer so you can time the heat to come on and off on and off once and then you've got the time displayed on the main control panel and in the bottom corner you've got the settings so should you get a warning triangle in the middle there which means something's failed you can go down to reset you can press reset it'll come a preset and you press again and it will factory reset the control panel and you'll have to go in and set the heating the temperature what energy source and the fan speed again So to lock the door on an auto trail, most models are fitted with central locking but if they're not all you need to do or if you want to individually lock one door you just push the chrome catch back and as soon as you pull it forward it will open the door. To operate your Dometic fridge so you've got three ways so you turn on here and then you'll see you've got three so you've got first one which is electric hookup so you've got to be on the mains connected to electric hookup for this to work so you'll use this on a site or if you're lucky enough to keep this at home if you're pre-chilling the fridge before your trip away you'd have it on electric hookup and then if you're while camping you wouldn't have electric hookup but you'd have gas so you just press on the gas flame there and you'll hear it ticking away in the background until it self ignites so you'd use the gas and then if you were traveling and you've pre-chilled it so you're traveling from site to site or you've pre-chilled it at home on gas or electric put your shopping in it's lovely and cool it turns it into a big cool box so what you do is you put on the battery it will fail here now because the engine's not running at the present but that's just a feed from the engine alternator so it's not off the leisure battery your leisure battery could never power a fridge it's a 12 volt feed off the engine which is just designed to keep the temperature of the same temperature of the fridge the same when traveling you've got your temperature here so when pre-chilling you'll probably want it on five but then once you get shopping in on board you'll probably want to turn it down to, to three or four to stop the shopping from freezing then one thing you want to do is when you're putting the van to bed or you're not using it i.e winterizing take everything out of it give it a wipe down with some anti-back wipes and sprays and then the last thing you want to do is close the door as it's got a rubber seal on there and it will trap the air in so on the light there's a little toggle pull these two forward and then as you can see you can get your hands down 
which allows air circulation in and out of the fridge and freezer box. So now in the kitchen area, so above you've got storage for your cups, bowls and plates. And then your microwave on this one is an 800 watt household microwave, so it only works on an electric cookup. But should you need to replace it in the future or isolate it, you can just unplug it here. Below, as long as your pump's on, your water will get a pressurise. Got hot water there so the water is getting lovely and warm there you've got your pop-up plugs so push the, the red button in at the bottom turn it off you'll be able to slide it down and then if you just lift the catch lift the chrome handle you'll be able to pull it up and turn the socket on and there you've got three plugs Cutlery tray, got storage drawer, and then you've got two cabinets. So if you just push the catches in, it'll open the doors. And here you've got your fed fed oven. So three gas rings. One electric hot plate, which is this one here, which is the back one, which only works when you're hooked up on a site. You've got your oven light. So there's your oven away. And then above, you've got your grill. So your grill's lit there. You may want to take your grill pan out when traveling, as it can rattle about. And then once you've had the hob on, always allow it to cool down before you put the cooker hood down, otherwise there is a chance you can smash the glass. So make sure it's cool. Underneath, you've got the plug for your electric hot plate, which is just in the corner here. So, so should you need to isolate that, you can do. And then on this side, you've got gas taps. So should you have any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. The gas taps are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced annually to make sure the gas is working to the standard set. Top right of the toilet, on the back there, on the blue button, you've got the electric flush, which if you press, make sure the pump's on, you'll get your flush. It's just fresh water. So always flush first, and then on the bottom bowl of the toilet, You've got the blade here, which is the square lever. If you slide that to the right, it opens the cassette blade and allows everything in the cassette. After use, if you flush it, and then if you slide this to the left, it'll isolate the blade. So that means you can get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle, and you always want to make sure that you shut it after use, just in case you do start traveling, there'll be no mess made with what's in the cassette. On the back here, there's a diagram of the cassette. When you get a light on there, it means that it's full and it's ready to be changed. You've got your hanging rail there, the wet towels, wet coats, but this also doubles up as great storage space for hanging things if you're going on a bigger trip. So you can put more clothes in here and then always make sure that your shower screen is tied back before travel and that you remove your shower head from your hose. As you can see there, it's got quite a loop in there. If you remove it and then allow the hose to lie in the shower tray, the fresh and the waste will be open from outside, but this would just drain any water that's in there through the waste and out the vehicle. Leave all your mixer taps open. You've got your light switch just under here for your washroom and shower. And there you have your cap for your cassette and your a small bottle of blue to open all your windows on the vehicle it's exactly the same as this one this one obviously being your frosted one with it being in the washroom you push it out tighten these in to keep the window out loosen them to bring it in and then close the levers your skylight you just push and then slide it 
the back or slide it into the groove should you want a little bit of ventilation. And then you do have a blackout blind for an evening and a fly screen for when the skylight is open. Ensure that the skylight and windows are always shut properly by before travel and to shut the skylight just push the bar up make sure the buttons below and popped out. So in the cupboard above the double dinette you've got your AC176 unit. So the black button at the top here is a system shutdown button so you can press that to stop any battery drain in the winter months but that will turn off the head unit and reverse camera so if you're going to drive the vehicle make sure that's on to use the radio and the reverse camera. You've got all your 12 volt fuses which are just a standard blade fuse and all listed what they do so carry some spares just in case and on this side you've got RCDs and MCBs with trips on mains 240 electric you've got your switch for your solar panel so it and only charging the leisure battery so you just turn down for leisure and leave it on there and then in the corner you've got a build number so this is unique to each vehicle built so if you want any parts quote that number we'll be able to get the best parts for you and then this particular motorhome is fitted with the media plus pack and this is the satellite there's a separate video on the satellite how to work it which i'll attach and send along with this vehicle to this customer if you do want to know how to work this if you just look on our channel then you'll be able to find maxview satellite demonstration so fitted as part of the media pack is a Avtex TV so if you just turn the bolt there and then at the back of the telly there's a little black lever just takes the tension and it drops the telly down then if you press the button it'll turn the telly on Championships really hasn't helped them because it's dissipated somewhat. And then if you press source, it's free view only. But if you ever fit a satellite to the vehicle, this telly has got a built-in satellite receiver, so you'll just need to plug the satellite in and it'll work fine. But to retune on digital telly, so from every location you move to, from site to site, from home to wherever you're going, you need to press AQT, which is this big orange button. So if you press and hold it'll start and do a automatic channel search and it'll find as many channels as it can where you're located. Operate your windows if you release the three levers and then turn the black dials to keep the window out just keeps the stay in position. Loosen it off to bring it in. Always make sure your skylights and windows are shut securely before traveling and we've got a blackout blind and a fly screen on each skylight and window so underneath here if you lift this up you've got storage and then when sliding the bed out if you just slide the leg out so there's a leg underneath here so when i come to show you how to make the bed just remember this slides out and then you pull the leg down for support Underneath here at the back, in underneath that black cover there, is where your leisure battery lives. And you'll see just poking out the top just here, just there, you've got a battery fuse. So this is the main battery fuse for the 12 volt battery, and this is a 20 amp fuse. So should you have any problems with getting 12 volt and you've checked your power supply unit above you, Try here just to make sure that the main battery hasn't blown. So to make the double dinette into a bed, you'd simply lift your table off. So it sits on this bar when traveling. So you'd lift it to 90 degrees, lift it off, and then you would fold the leg. So there's a lever here, which just allows the leg to fold, which you'd clip the leg up. And then if you just Put the table, rest it onto these reels. That forms the bed base, and then what you'll need to do is put the two infill cushions, so one in there, 
one in there. It is a quite quite a tight squeeze, but it's designed to be like that for when you sleep on. And there you've got a double bed. Should you be wanting to use it as a single across, you'd slide this seat out and have it a single across the vehicle. To form this bed, you'd slide this out. And then pull the mattress up and over. And there you have a double bed in the Luton. You've got a ladder there, so that just clips on here. And then what you can do is fold the mattress back over and push this back in, which allows you greater headroom to get in and out the cab if you're coming through the motorhome. At the back of the vehicle, you've got a stand here for a boom arm table. So in the wardrobe is where you'll find your leg at the back and your table top. So that can just go into there. And to make the bed, you, you would just simply turn the turnbuckle, slide this forward, it'll come out all the way until it hits this groove. So then what you need to do is just lift it up and over. Put onto the other side so it keeps it from falling back. Then you'd use the infill cushions, so your back rests in here. Turn them upside down. And they just pop into here and there you have a double bed at the back. You'll also notice if you want the table removed from the double dinette, it stores in here. And you've got your telly points, so you've got a 12 volt satellite point, aerial point, 240 volt socket and two USBs. All your little reading lights are individually switched around the vehicle. To turn your seats on your cab, you've got two levers on either seat in the middle, so if you just pull it out, slide around. If you were to get stuck on the door, all you need to do is adjust your driving position by pulling the seat forward, and then you'll be able to turn around into the back of the vehicle and sit around the lounge in the back. And that's the same for the driver's seat as well. So now in the cab, to the right of the driver is your handbrake and then to black the side windows of the cab out, you've got Remus cab lines so you'd pinch and slide these out, so that'll do the driver and the passenger and then on the passenger door itself you've got your electric windows and electric mirror adjustment. So you choose your mirror. So you've got two mirrors on each side, which is the top and the blind spot. So you can adjust them electronically. And then on here, you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights. You've got exactly the same Remus car blinds on the windscreen. So you'd pinch, slide these out and do exactly the same on the other. Meet in the middle, they are just magnetic, like so. And then they just store away. And then here you've got your trip computer on the end of your wiper stalk, which will tell you your range, your average consumption, your instant consumption, your traveling times, your distance traveled, and so on. You've got your Hands free, this will scroll through your radio tracks, your media and your contacts, your volume and mute. Lights and indicators, cruise control speed limiter, so it's off in the middle, up for cruise control, get your desired speed and push it up. To accelerate, push and hold, and to decelerate, push down. Should you need to cancel, you can cancel it with a foot brake or on the wiper stalk or on the end of the stalk, sorry. And then if you want to resume it, so to the last speed set before the engine's turned off, you would just press resume. Should you want the speed limiter, scroll to the bottom on here. And then if you push up slowly, it goes up in ones. If you push and hold, it goes up in fives. And then you do have the kick down function. So if you put the accelerator at the floor, it'll override the 
speed limiter as is, this is the safety feature six speed manual gearbox with lift into reverse so you lift and it brings in the reverse camera on the head unit and then below you've got air saw off which is anti-slip relief so it's another word for basically turning your traction control off should you be slipping and you want to stop the ASP overriding hazards locks the door and it does lock the habitation door on this model because it is fitted with central locking you've got your heated mirrors and then you've got USB for charging and 12 volt for charging The USB up here, you've got two for the head unit, so that's to connect to the head unit. And then you've got a glove box. And then below, you've got your temperature on the outside ring. Fan speed must be on at least one or more, so you've got one to four for the aircon to work. Then it's where you want the air to go to, face, feet or screen. And whether you're recirculating air within the motorhome or bringing fresh air in. This box here is cooled and heated by the air conditioning as well. So should you have any sweets for when you're driving, if you've got the air conditioning on, they'll stay nice and cool and you can have them in there instead of getting up and down to the fridge when driving. So to operate your Accent head unit, which this model is an XF270 model, You've got a GPS card in the top here, which works the navigation. So what you do is you click for navigation, click in the bottom left hand corner. You see where you are on the map. Go to new route, go to address. And then in the middle, you've got, so you've got a choice of the country, you've got a choice of the town and postcode. So that's where you'd likely put your town and postcode in. there and then you can put your street name in there and then you go to town it'll show you a preview of where you're going and then you just press set as destination on this will turn to green and you click there and that would be you sorted for putting your address in on this side it'll tell you your time of arrival time left your distance and your miles per hour your arrival your distance and your time left so it'll tell you all that Radio is FM AM and you can press preset so you can save six radio channels or you can go back to home and it's is DAB so you can go to list you've got your national your regional channels and your BBC channels and again once you're happy with finding your favorite stations you can go to preset and save six Scroll along, you've got Bluetooth, so you press Bluetooth. You'd find, you'd search for Accent on your phone. At the same time as searching, this is searching, and it'll come up with your phone, model, or name, and you just press pair. Then you'll, it'll come up on your phone whether you want to allow your contacts to be downloaded. Press allow, and it'll download your contacts into the head unit. And then this is where, if you were using your phone to stream off Bluetooth audio, you'll get the little music icon here and you'll be able to stream your music Bluetooth off your phone. Scrolling further along, you've got USB iPod, which all works through the USBs. You've got camera, so you can have the camera on when going forward, but that'll only work when the engine's on. So at the minute, they just the ignition's on. So as soon as you put the engine on, you'll be able to have the camera on permanently, but then you'll be able to come out of it to go onto the various other settings and then you do have your settings at the end so if you go to other you can view the software that it's running so it's running 2. v2.4 which is the latest software should the head unit get slow or glitchy it might mean that it needs an update so if you just go on the xsense website updates f270 is the model download it on it with usb stick pop it in the usb and then you'll want to press install software start update and then when the USB is in you'll this tick will illuminate and you'll be able to tick the screen and that will download 
your latest softwares. At the bottom you've got shortcuts, you've got home, nav, camera, DAB, alternative and Bluetooth. So you can go in shortcuts which are designed for when you're driving so you can go in and out without taking your eyes off the road.